All right, welcome back to a Birdman Drug Stories here on the Birdman Martins channel. Um, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're watching and you enjoy my uh, content. And if you want to share it, feel free to share it. Um, I have to kind of come into the bedroom to do today's video because my fiance is out there making candles for our candle business that we started, um, which helps her get health insurance down here uh, where we're at. So um, we also donate $2 from every candle sale um, to the sober house I graduated from in Springfield, Mass., called the Michael J. Dias Foundation, MJD. Um, I graduated from that uh, sober house, and I'm, gonna have, I'm going to have a whole series of stories from my time going into the sober house and uh, doing the sober house thing. So um, I have a whole series on that coming up. But today's story, is gonna, we're going to go way back in time. Um, sorry, my cat just covered up the uh, thing. We're going to go way back in time with today's story. It's probably when I was about 20 years old or so, um, during like the beginning of the, the ecstasy phase where... We would take, uh, you know, my friends would take uh, lots of e-pills every weekend and, you know, go out partying. We'd, we'd rent hotel rooms and just have, like, an ecstasy party in there. Everybody would be rolling and smoking blunts. And uh, now this crew of kids was about two years younger than I was at the time. Uh, the time frame here is about 2004, um, which means I was two years out of high school. I was about 20, 21. I was hanging out with uh, friends of mine that were two years younger, like, in school. So it was their senior year. Um, for that reason, it was like on me to say rent the hotel room. Um, they'd be like, hey, hey, bird, can you, uh, we'll give you all the money. Uh, you know, you obviously can come to the party. You'll get the room under your name and we'll just rock out. And I was all for it because, you know, if I had some e-pills to sell or wanted to sell some weed, um, it was a good spot to do that. So I don't usually get the hotel room under my name and we'd party out and rock out. Um, so it was their senior, it was my younger friends, it was their senior prom night. So I got them a a hotel room for that night to throw like an after prom party um i would get the room and all that and uh i took some e-pills i had a, a bunch of pot to sell allegedly for this fake pretend story entertainment purposes only but this gets crazy with the uh with the e-pills um i started taking them pretty much as soon as i got them like midday and setting up for the party getting a hotel room just dropping e-pills smoking blunts getting fucked up and getting ready for the uh the night ahead um so I did all that and uh, got the hotel room and, I, and I'm fucked up and I'm waiting for like the prom to finish up and end. And uh, as I'm waiting for it to end, I had to go to a gas station just to get like, I think uh, a cigar so we could smoke. And uh, I took one of my buddy's cars. I left my car there at the time. I took one of my buddy's cars, an old ass Monte Carlo, old school car, like a gas guzzler type car. And uh, but I was all fucked up from the ecstasy. I was wicked fucked up. I was tripping hard on the E. Um, there were strong pills. I had taken quite a few of them. I was smoking blunts the whole time. Uh, I was just pounding water, rolling, just rolling face. Wicked fucked up. Um, I go just right, supposed to go right down the street just to get like a, uh, a Dutch master, you know. So you come back and we roll a blunt. And I take my buddy's car and he didn't have that much gas in it. Um kind of go by myself and get completely lost now I, like i said i had some weed to sell i think like an ounce of good weed to sell but i didn't want to drive around with this i left it in the hotel room like under the mattress under the bed while i ran to the store to get a cigar so we could all smoke i go out there i, I don't think i even brought my my uh my cell phone no i didn't bring my cell phone which was part of the problem i was about to encounter because i was just supposed to go right down the street to the uh gas station and right back it should be like a you know, five ten minute thing at the most i didn't bring my cell phone i left my weed left my cell phone i took off and uh i was so fucked up and tripping so hard on the e that i went and got myself completely lost now we're in chicopee mass which is one town over from my hometown which is also near springfield mass uh where you know where i, I grew up and stuff in those areas and uh we got I got so fucked up when I, when I was on my way to get a Dutch. I got completely lost to the point where, like, I'm hopping on highways somehow. Um, I end up in, like, different hoods and ghettos. I'm, like, all of a sudden I'm in Springfield and I'm back in Chicopee. I'm just, like, completely lost, and which is crazy because I wasn't going all that far. Just the e-pills were, were hitting me so hard at that time that I got completely off track and completely lost. So then what happened after that was... um. I'm gone. As I'm gone, I got this. I got the cigars, but I can't find my way home. 
And like, I know I'm not supposed to be like on highways or interstates, but I'm on all these highways and shit. Somehow I can barely see I'm tripping my face off. Um, and it's raining real bad. So I can't really see. And at this point I'm running out of gas. Like I said, I don't have my cell phone or anything on me. And I, I'm running out of gas in this big ass V8 Monte Carlo gas guzzler, you know, my boy's car, my cell phone, my weed. And I have a bunch of money from, from, uh, the weed sales, you know, under the bed also. I just went out with a couple of dollars to grab the Dutch, left my money, left my weed and my phone in the hotel room that I got for the party. And I'm gone from what they tell me. Um, in hindsight, they, I was gone for probably two hours or three hours or something like that. It should have been a five minute thing and I don't have my phone. So I'm completely lost. They're all calling my phone, blowing it up. I don't even have my phone on me. It's probably ringing right next to him there. Um, like in the hotel room, you know, um, sorry, there's my cat going by and, uh, as I go, as I, as I go from the hotel, I'm gone for a couple of hours just to get this Dutch. I'm completely lost. I can't find my way back and I'm running out of gas. Um, as this is happening, now I'm getting like panicked and desperate. Like I'm tripping so bad. Um, I can barely see as I'm driving and it's raining and I'm in an old Monte Carlo. I was, I was peeking so hard when I was driving that I was getting like the scatter vision. Like, uh, when you're tripping so hard on the E, it feels like your vision goes like this and just like scatters, you know, it's like a, a television set with bad reception. It's like my vision is like flickering in and out as I'm driving fucked up. And, uh, as I go all the way back, as I go all the way back, I'm trying to get my way back to the hotel and I can't, I'm running out of gas. So I pull into a gas station, um, reflecting back on, I think I was in the North end of Springfield. It doesn't really matter, but I kind of, um, seeing these Spanish kids, these Puerto Rican kids, uh, three or four of them at the gas station, I went up to him. I was wicked fucked up. I'm like, Hey, I'm like, I was like, I was like, yo guys, I was like, I'm lost. Like I got weed. I got a hotel room. I'm throwing a party. You guys can come chill at the party and I'll smoke you up. But my weed is back at the, uh, the hotel. Do you guys know where the super eight, uh, motel is in Chicopee? And, uh, these dudes they didn't even speak. They didn't even speak no English, you know? And, uh, but they kind of heard what I was telling them and they kind of conferenced with each other. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I was so fucked up. I didn't even think like any danger could come from it. I thought they were like good Samaritans. So I offered to smoke some blunts with them. Um, as soon as we got back to the room that we're having a party and like they could hang out too. Mind you, it wasn't like my party. I got the hotel room and everything for my younger friends, but like it was their prom night. It was their prom night party. You know, I was like the, the loser older kid that was hanging out there, you know, cause they're like 18 and I'm like 20. Um, so I'm like inviting these random Spanish kids from the ghetto to like come hang out with us. And, you know, it's from, this is a Ludlow prom. So it's like all like, uh, it wasn't like, you know, they're not the type of kids that are going to want, um, you know, ghetto ass kids at the party. You know, the girls would probably be all freaking out, not wanting to, uh, to go to a party if you got like hood dudes there, you know? Um, but fuck yeah, I was in a pinch and these kids helped me out. Um, so, you know, we talk and they're able to, to understand what I'm telling them that we need to get back to the super eight, uh, hotel in Chicopee. Finally, um, you know, I think I follow them or they hopped in my car, I forget exactly what happened. Um, but we all make our way. I don't remember if we all hopped in the car I had, or if we followed each other, but we went all the way back to the hotel and they got me there. Now we go in the room and nobody is in the room. I guess my friends were all out looking for me. Uh, like, kind of trying to trace my, uh, trace my steps going back to the gas station I was supposed to be at. And they're kind of out there looking for me, a bunch of them, um, whose prom it was. And they're all kind of getting out of prom and wondering what the hell happened to me. Um, so I wanted to stick to my word. We get back to the hotel room and I'm tripping face on the E. Um, I tell these kids, yeah, I'm fucked up. I'm rolling. Do you guys do E? And they're like, you know, they're no, no, they don't. We just smoke. We just smoke. I'm like, oh, it's cool, man. And I was like, I smoke too. Here, let's smoke a blunt or two. And uh, I roll up a couple of big blunts. I had them roll up the blunts because I was too fucked up to even roll roll a blunt at that point. I let them roll up a couple of nice blunts out of my weed. And I'm uh, not even thinking the whole time. Like, I don't even know these kids. Um, you know, I got there's three or four of them, and I'm just me by myself. I have like an ounce of weed and a bunch of money under under the mattress in the hotel room. It was just like a reckless situation on my part you know like not very smart but uh nothing 
bad came for it. They were like good kids. They didn't try heisting me. They didn't try jacking me or anything like that. They came there. They smoked a couple of blunts. So as we're smoking the blunts, um, my friends get back to the hotel room because they, they seen the car that I took was back. So they figured I should be back. But they didn't realize I was in the room with these three or four Spanish uh, ghetto dudes smoking blunts. And I walk in there and they, they're like, they look at me, they're like, they're like, yo, Bird, what the fuck are you doing? Who the fuck is this? And I'm like, all fucked up, smoking a blunt, rolling. I'm like, yeah, hey, it's fucking Juanito. And that's uh, my boy Paco right there. And like, I got lost. That's their cousin, Ramon. And uh, I got lost. They helped me out. I told them if they could uh, find the hotel room with me, I'd smoke them up. And, and I don't know if I gave them some gas money too, but I think I just like smoked them up. I'm explaining that to my boys. I'm all fucked up, tripping. Like, yeah, man, it's cool. We're just smoking. Next thing you know, I set off the fucking fire alarms. Like, there's too much smoke in the room because it was straight clam baked. And the whole room is filled, filled with thick, thick weed smoke. And this is 2004, so, like, now, present day, Massachusetts, uh, pot is legal. It's recreationally passed. You can smoke. You know, it's not illegal. But back in 2004, you would still get arrested if you had, like, uh, a stem or, like, you know, a half a gram of weed, you would get arrested, or just a roach, um, back then, so pot totally was not legal yet, um, 2004, now I set off the fire alarms, because I smoked, uh, too many blunts in the room, with these, uh, Spanish kids from the hood, and, uh, now my friends are fucking bugging out there, bird, what the fuck, we got, everybody's about to get here, fucking, and everyone's bugging out, my, my friend is fanning like crazy, he's at, he's at where the, uh, fire detectors, and he's fanning like crazy, and he throws me, like, a sheet, or a pillow sheet, and he's like, bird, he's like, fan it, fan, I'm like, what do you mean, man, I'm fucked up, he's like, fan the fucking smoke, so we're all sitting there, fanning the smoke, fanning the smoke, next thing you know, the fucking fire department's there, banging on the door, like, oh, uh, chickpea fire department, we're here, like, the fire alarm went off, and it reeks, like, pot smoke, and, like, we all got nervous, and we all just kind of jetted out of there for the time being. Um, we figured the cops might not be far behind. Um, so all my friends, they were so mad at me. Like, I ruined their prom night party. They promoted this prom night hotel party, like, all week in their school. And, like, they didn't even get to have the party there because, you know, little young 20-year-old bird at the time um, got lost because I was tripping too hard from the e-pills I had taken because I was partying before the party even started, and, uh, you know, came back with these kids, and the kids weren't the problem, like I said, they were all, they were all right, they didn't, they didn't rob me or nothing, I smoked them up, they helped me out, um, they helped me find the hotel room where my friends were at, but the problem then was, like, when they were in there, my friends already got mad they were there, and as they're yelling at me for that, now the fire alarms start going off from the pot smoke, so, uh, party is pretty much over before it gets canceled at, you know, at that point, so, um, that was a crazy time. This was way back in the day, like I said, 2004. Um, this is like the be beginning of like the drug days, really, uh, you know, doing ecstasy all the time at the time, um, doing coke a lot, drinking at the club a lot. Um, you know, we all had fake IDs since we were like in high school, you know. Um, you'd be getting fucked up all the time back then, and it wasn't like the... Uh, dangerous repercussions like this you know my friends were pissed but i look back on it like that shit's pretty funny like what happened that night i feel like i pulled a stunt i got lost because i got too fucked up on the e it was a typical birdman type idiot maneuver that i pulled and i got told totally lost you know um i hope you enjoyed today's story it was kind of just a, a quick short one from the ecstasy days and uh it's a short one because this was way back um you know, 2004 is what, 16 years ago, that's a lot of drugs and a lot of brain cells go to, but I remember all those details vividly, but, um, in terms of, like, I, I don't know, remember too much of that night to speak on it, other than, like, what I do remember and what people told me, because I was so fucked up on it, but if you're enjoying my stories, don't forget to like and subscribe, and importantly, also share it, like, if you want to share it on your Facebook or whatever, um, all these stories are, uh, you know, for entertainment purposes only, but they are, you know, they're authentic and they're real and the feelings are real in them. And uh, there were crazy times. In the beginning, the drug times were, were fun, you know, rolling with your friends and uh, like that crew of friends that, you know, we all kind of grew apart in the drug game. Some would turn into addicts, some would go to jail, some would clean up, some would go be normal folks. So, um, you know, when you're young, you think, oh, we're all going to be friends forever. We're going to be living it up forever. But in my experience, that's not really how it pans out. You know, life happens and you grow apart 
move in different directions, you know, uh, just lucky to be alive, you know, from, uh, the overdoses, the, uh, the five day coma I had a little jail stint I did. Um, my life today is nothing shy of a miracle. I thank God every morning, um, because I never thought possible I'd be able to, to do anything positive and I am doing lots of positive things now. Um, this quarantine is just about over for me. I'm going to have to, uh, go back into work here in a, in a few days, um, back selling cars, you know, we're, laid off for a little bit because of the uh, corona thing but my page has been going well and people have been enjoying it so i'm gonna keep doing it um it probably won't be as often as it will be now because of the quarantine that we're on you know i'll be back at work and i work a lot of hours at the dealership but like i said i really enjoy doing these videos it seems like my viewers are enjoying them my friends uh, are enjoying them and random people i never met complete strangers are giving me good feedback that they're enjoying them too so i'm gonna keep doing them it probably won't be as often as it was like um you know, when I'm on the quarantine now, but, you know, I'll still post, uh, the Birdman drug stories and recovery, um, cause shit's real, you know, like I said, from that crew, you know, some, some are dead, some went to jail, you know, some, uh, some live, lives will never be the same and, uh, myself included, but I'm lucky to, uh, still have a shot at it, you know, and doing positive things. Like I donate back to the Michael's house foundation, $2 from every candle sale, from my fiance and I's business, you know, first time ever donated to any charity in my life, you know, um, I only sent them like a $50 thing, to, you know, for our first 25 sales, $2 donation per sale. So our first 25 sales, I sent them $50 donation, first time ever donated to charity in my life. I felt so good about it, you know, and I hope the candle business goes well. Um, the reason we started the candle business to begin with is my fiance has some health issues and they don't have free health coverage down south or affordable health coverage. Um, so basically make a long story short, we had to start a business, an LLC to, for her to be able to get health coverage, um, for the brain tumor she has. It's a non-cancerous brain tumor, thank God. But, um, that's why we started the business. And then I came up with the idea as well to donate $2 per sale to the, uh, Michael J. Dias Foundation. It's a sober house in Springfield. Um, and that's a really, really crazy story there. It's a kid in my hometown I grew up with that got so messed up on drugs, ended up taking a gun to his head and, and killing himself. You know, he was dropping out of school and going through lots of trouble and he was getting messed up on, uh, on the oxys and the perks. And, uh, you know, he shot himself and uh, his mother started that foundation to help people come back from drugs. And I knew this kid personally and uh, I graduated from the house I donate to. So if you're interested in a candle, just look it up on Facebook, Eclatant, E-C-L-A-T-A-N-T, -A -A L-L-C, Eclatant. LLC. It's on Facebook. Um, instructions are from there if you want to order one. They're really nice luxury candles, soy wax, wooden wicks. They're uh, top of the line type shit. Um, and I give back to charity. So uh, that's it for today's story. I hope you enjoyed it. Bird gang out.